What is up, people? It's Josh. I'm back. Uh, I think I'll just call this episode two. Uh, we're here for some more Duelist Live. Today I'm going to be playing this hyper-fast Roam deck. Uh, it's just a swarm deck, and it goes really fast. The curve tops out at four mana. You're hoping to kill your opponent by six or seven uh, most of the time. Uh, but yeah, let's just get right into it. I'm playing against Starhorn. To be honest, I don't know what he's playing, but this is probably one of my best matchups because he just gives me free cards, uh, which I can use to swarm him even more. Uh, I'm going to keep one Dream Gazer. That's going to be my replace on my first turn. And I'm cheating a little bit, but it seems like he's playing Replace Starhorn. Um, so we might need to be scared about a White Widow. Uh, but we're just going to replace these two cards. Blood Tier Immo on five. Very good. Oh, we get another Dream Gazer. That's not great. It is not great. We're going to walk on forward and replace this. First thing. We get a Celebrant. Which I... I think is good. I'm gonna play it here, and then I'm gonna Fighting Spirit, and just play out whatever one drop I get. So I get Ubo, which is, it's acceptable. It's a one mana 2-3. That's not bad. And I played in the middle because I want to stop him from just punching my Dream Gazer. Uh, we have Murkblood Devourer, which is gonna be pretty nice next turn. He plays two Aether Masters. So there is a world where I just play Blood Tier Holy Emo here, if he lets me get one in, because I do not want him to play White Widow. And oh my god, he plays a Planar Scout and steals my mana. So now I'm like, I don't know if this is Swarm, or if he's just playing Replace with a Planar Scout. I'm not quite sure. He's going to take four from the Ubo. I'm not too upset. I think I'm happy with that. Next turn is almost certainly going to be Blood Tier MO. Uh, I think I'm just going to play Merc Blood on the tile and uh, hope that this Dream Gazer gets plus one, plus one. So let's lead on forward. I could steal his tile, but I want to punch this Planar Scout. So I'm going to do this, play the Merc Blood here. And now I'm going to replace before punching, before moving, because. There is a 40% chance that I get a good spawn here. Um, but if I punch or move, then there's more spawns, so I have less odds. We get a good spawn, so I'm pretty happy with that. Now that I have the Skywind Glaives, I'm almost tempted to just play the Blood Tier out as a 3-2, um, because this represents two more damage. And I have a lot of 1-drops in my deck. But I think I'm going to keep it. I think I'm going to hold. And I'm not going to punch with my Celebrant. Because you don't want to trade with your 1-5. Your because you want to be able to summon more... Or you want to be able to buff it. So like if I get a Warblade, then it becomes a 2-6. But if I punched, it would only become a 2-4. So it just gives you a little extra damage. And you need every little bit of damage you can get when you're playing... A deck that has top end holy emo trinity oath. So he's gonna lead on forward and punch the celebrant. He drew me a card, which is greatly appreciated. Blue tip scorpion is interesting. Very interesting. So, this game is probably over. I think my opponent has lost. Uh, because I can just ignore these Aether Masters. They don't do anything for him. And I can just start sending everything face. Um, so I'm going to... Move Celebrant over... This is difficult, because I want a hero power. I want to get my my crest fallen down to make it 2-3. Um, but also, I want to walk up and punch him and Skywind Glaives and do all that. So I 
think I will move this Dream Shaper here. No. This Dream Shaper... I'm just gonna take one charge on my Skywind Glaives to do this. I think it's fine. Uh, and I'm not gonna hero power this turn. I'm going to punch with Celebrant and then and then life stream it uh, back up because it'll give me a lot of value. I'm just thinking about the proper way of doing this all. Playing it like this, I don't know if I needed to take one damage on my Skywind Glaives. I'd have to go back and watch, but I just ran out of time. Um, but regardless, he's at 7 HP. I have Blood Tear Immo, which is 5, and then... 2 more on my face. So, And he just went down to 5, so I think he's going to die here. Blood tier. All right, he's just forfeited. Okay, that's a good first game. Ten MMR for that win actually. It's pretty good. Kind of surprising. And nice. So you get a quick Q here against the one and only complaint list playing Wanderer Xerix. I am sure of it. Yes. I'm going to dump Oath and Lifestream. I would really like another 1-drop. I'd also like to look for my Golems, uh, Golem Metallurgist Warblade. The whole combo is you want to Lifestream your Warblade, and then get more Warblades, because the Warblade is the best card in the deck. So. Yeah, I'm going to lead on forward with two Silver Guard Squires here. Uh, I'm going to replace this Blood Tier, because I need Warblade. Okay. Like, if I find Warblade here... It's perfect. Absolutely perfect. But, you know, I still have Skywind Glaive's Blood Tier next turn. It's pretty nice. I get two 3-4s. Quite scary. We'll see what he does. I'd be really excited if he just dropped a Pyromancer. Because then I could get a lot of value off this Blood Tier Alchemist. He's playing defensively, which is smart because I'm I'm swarming. Lava Storm Obelisk in the corner. Okay. So I can't ramp because this will just shoot my guy. That's not a good draw. It is not good. So I could play Golem Metallurgist just here, and then ramp to Skywind Glaives, but I don't think that's good, um, because my Golem will just die to his Dervish and his face. So we have to take a slow turn like this, uh, it's pretty unfortunate, but we do have quite a good turn next turn, uh, we can play everything. And hopefully that's enough. He's probably going to have a lot of AoE in his deck as Wander. There's going to be Bone Swarm. Um, he might have Frostbone Naga. Uh, something not so common, maybe Bone Reaper or Death Blighter, but those could definitely be in the deck. Uh, so it's going to be hard to play around those, but there's not much I can do. I have to just go absolutely ape. I have to become a monkey. Or else I will not win, because I'm already down to four cards. And he has a Portal Guardian, which is 
pretty much just going to win him the game on the spot. Because if I sink 8 damage into it, I'm going to lose. And if I ignore it, I'm also going to lose. So. And he also has an Azur Herald, which sucks. Alright, let's replace first. I think that's a good spawn. Now I can go Golem Metallurgist on the tile, give me three mana, and then I can... I can... Hero Power. It's hard because I can't play around Frenzy. I really cannot play around Frenzy. Um, but I can Hero Power, Warblade, and then Lifestream to get another Warblade. It's just a question of how do I want to do this. I need a Hero Power, so I almost have to just move like this. So I guess that's all I can do. And then we're going to play Warblade. Uh, this will slap there. And then just get another Warblade. I hope the Dervish spawns here. That would be ideal. And we do get the good spawn. Uh, so he can't just trade the Dervish and the Portal Guardian. He can still just BBS the Portal Guardian eats the, uh, the Crest Fallen. And I take four, uh, three damage as well. But there's not much I can do. And he has Repulsor Beast. So Repulsor Beast plus his hero power, he can just frenzy everything. And that's the game. I don't think there's any coming back from this for me. I do get to keep my Skywind Glaives. So I can kill his Portal Guardian off. So I need to move this up, and well, I'd like for this to live, and I'd like for this to get the buff, but unfortunately I can't do both, unless I just play this out of my hand. Move down. Uh, blood tear his face. A little bit of damage. Uh, War blade. Here, so he can't just trade with two punches. And then now I will replace the dream gazer. Azure lion's a pretty good hit. Um, we'll play around Bone Swarm, I guess, a little bit by going here. But he still has five cards in hand. I have one, and he honestly can probably just play Wanderer here if he punches, punches, and punches. Uh, he can kill three of my things uh, and then just play Wanderer. So. It's not good. I'll tell you what, it is not good for me. I 
At this point, I don't think I can afford to just play the Warblade this turn. I need to hit, like, a Holy Ammo and then Warblade. But if I do Warblade, I can get a value trade here. Double trade, set up a 2-3 taunt. And then maybe this can get in face for a bunch of damage. You can also Warblade this up to three. I, think I can move my general here. No, I can't. Because I could double trade with the lion after playing Warblade. And then, uh... And then have a 4-3, punch him a 2-3 and a 2-5. I think I just need to hit Trinity Oath. Not bad. Get a Celebrant. Which I will just play. I will just play this. I'm just gonna punch. Play my provoke unit, which is just going to uh It's going to get eaten by uh the Dervish. But there's not much I can do. We have a little bit of gas, but it's not going to get us there. If he plays anything large, I'm just gonna, going to to fold. To win, I'm going to need the fattest Holy Ammo mankind has ever seen. But who knows? Maybe he plays uh, five one-drops here and I get Holy Ammo. Anything's possible, right? So he just keeps trading down my board, which is all he has to do to win at this point. Uh, he's still at 22. I've dealt an entire three damage to his face. Uh, six now, just doubled that. But as long as I'm off the board, there's nothing I can really do to, to win. I have no win condition. Sand Swirls, my Celebrant, or his Dervish. Now he's just going to summon a Rush Dervish to kill my Azeret Lion. Yeah, that's game over. Because this Dervish can just eat my Azeret Lion. He summons another 3-3. Three, three. Not too much I can do about this. Just gonna be Merc Blood Devourer here. Um, and Holy Immolation. I have to emulate to clear the board. I'm gonna punch him, because I need damage. And I'll play this somewhat defensively. Just so like if he gets this Dervish spawn, it can't just walk down and kill it. My hope here is gonna be summoning a couple of Merc Bloods and then getting big guys. But, like a healing mystic here, any two drop really just summons 70 70 worth of value, so. This isn't gonna do anything. No matter what I draw, the game is over. But I can stall for a turn with Holy Ammo. 
that's not gonna do it. Uh, well, let's just summon a big crest fallen for fun and then forfeit. Look at how big that crest fallen is. That's a 3 4 with provoke. Wow. He didn't have to do this, he could just hit me for 12, um, trade the dervish, punch the general, and then hit with the four dervishes. Um, but why think when you can, you can just play EMP and dispel it. So we got the eight mana, which means we lost. Uh, the game's supposed to be over two turns ago. Um, but let's just queue up another one and see if we can't go faster. We're against Helgen himself. If I beat him, he might ban me from the servers. But I must try anyway for the video. So this matchup, I just have to outswarm him. Um, don't think I can hold on to these two cards. Really looking for like a... A Celebrant Warblade opener. It's interesting. I think this might be too slow. I'm not sure. I don't even want to open with Double Lion because... He can just trade one down with this Carrion Collector. Probably replace one Metallurgist. That's a pretty good opener. Perk Blood, we get a 2-5 in the middle. So he's definitely not going to kill that. Um, he could Demonic Lure this and then trade. But that's not the worst for us. Not the worst. And we get a Warblade, so this is pretty good. Consuming Rebirth, he's just going to get a couple, uh, a couple of discounts on his Dying Wish minions. He could play the... Uh, Yep, this one, Void Hunter here. Wow, that's it's pretty strong, but I can just kill this shaman. And that's perfect. Another one drop is perfect. So I'm just gonna let the play speak for itself. Uh, I don't wanna explain too much. We're just going to double trade so this Azure Shaman doesn't get any value. And we have quite a large board. Trinity Oath to refuel is great. Uh, pretty much just looking for a Holy MO at this point. I don't need more minions, I just need to keep my minions alive. Uh, life stream would be great as well. So he has two discounts on his Dying Wish minions now. Uh, three. And he plays Nekomata, draws a couple cards. Um, yeah, not too big of a deal. I'm trying to count damage. <laughs> uh, so one thing I do need to do is play around Nasher. And so... The only way for me to do that is to provoke him. And I'm just going to get him. Just gonna absolutely go face here. Uh, he doesn't really have a great Nasher. This is this tile, maybe. It's kind of his only option. 
Um, but my guys have four hit points, so it's not even that bad. He just concedes because he must have no way of answering this. So that's what it's supposed to do. You know, you just get those quick wins. Against Maeve, she spends her first two turns not really doing anything, just getting discounts. Um, and so I'm able to easily just out-tempo her and win on board before her discounts ever matter. So that was just like a nice quick game. And we get another Starhorn. And this hand is pretty good. I'll probably replace Blood Tier Alchemist. Skywind Glaives is good too. So Azurite Lion, you can't go wrong. It's always a good opener. I also could have played Celebrant Silverguard Squire, but this Celebrant would be so far away that I don't think it's really worth it. I can just ramp next turn. Uh, what's probably going to end up happening, excuse me, is gonna I'm going to play a bunch of minions, a Fighting Spirit, and then a Skywind Glaives on my next turn. And if I don't win, or if I'm not hard winning by then, I probably lose. But if I am hard winning by then, you know, then we win. So it's pretty linear. It, there's a lot of options I could do. Like I could just play. Uh, one plus three, like Silverguard Squire and Skywind Glaives. Uh, but it's too slow. You always want to get your minions down before you apply the uh, the Skywind Glaives. Because if you just play it, then you need to play your minions on the next turn, and then wait a turn still before you get that attack in. Whereas if you play the minions first, uh, then you can surprise them with the Skywind Glaives and get the attack in right away. Um, so it's always better to have your minions down first. Azurite Lion obviously is great with the uh, the Glaives buff, the Warblade buffs, and the extra hit point from Fighting Spirit. So, Celerity is just a very good keyword. This guy is taking his sweet time on turn one. Must be a lot to think about. Come on, man. Move. Make a move, bro. Make a move! No, don't be AFK. Alright, this guy is just not playing the game. <laughs> Oni is... Pretty good battle pet, but we're just going to replace it. I'm not saying my opponent is dead here, but... It is closer than you would believe. I'm just going to play this and get all the damage in. Because um, I just want to play around like Plasma Storm, you know? Maybe he was baiting me by being AFK into a, a big Plasma Storm. But it doesn't seem like it. I think he's just dead. I got Oni back, which is pretty epic. That's clickbait, man. I can say, I killed my opponent on the... on the fourth turn. Alright, we'll queue up one more. Just because that guy didn't play the game. <laughs> one thing I really like about this deck is that it goes fast. You can get a lot of games in. Um, just by spamming your guys. And you know, like I said, you either win in three turns or you're losing three turns. So... If you like flipping coins, this is a good deck. So we get a Cassava. I'm not sure how this matchup's gonna go. Because I don't know what he's playing. He could have 
grasp of agony, that kind of thing. This is pretty sweet, line in the middle. Um, I do need to play around grasp of agony. Um, it's one of the the best tools against my deck. He's gonna play a nightmare offering. He's gonna play two nightmare offerings, which is very interesting. So I think for this turn, I have it pretty easy. Um, I'm just gonna trade. I'm quite happy trading, I think. So you get the free two damage in face before trading. And then I'm just gonna play my celebrant. I'm not sure exactly where I want to put this mana tile. I think here is good. Probably just central is good. Should be pretty hard for him to steal this outside of punch and more two drops, which isn't the worst for me because then he goes down to three cards in hand. But uh, this board is pretty resilient. It's not too weak to grasp of agony. Uh, it's good for Skywind Glaze. Probably has a Sphere of Darkness, yeah. Emerald Shroud. Okay. So I can do a couple things. I can Trinity Oath and look for a Warblade, because I can play it this turn. Uh, or I can just play BBS plus Skywind Glaives, which I think is what I'm going to end up doing. Um, it's just a little tough, because ideally I want to put my Hero Power here. I wish I was swapped with the Dream Gazer. I want to punch this Ephemeral Shroud, and then play Skywind Glaives. Uh, but there's no position that I can punch it with my face, so I'm just going to equip the Glaives, uh, get the damage in, and then I'm fine just taking one, one charge on my artifact. And you know what, I still ended up messing this up. Because... This is out of position. And again, I'm going to play around Grasp of Agony. I could have punched with this instead of the Celebrant, but I didn't want it to just die to ping. So. I should have, what I should have did is punched, or Skywind Glaives, punched with the Dream Gazer, punch with the Celebrant, then move up. Uh. Crestfallen, move the Golem Meddler just to where the Celebrant is now, and punch him for four more. So he'd be at 11. And that'd be pretty threatening with this Holy Emo. So he Demonic lures us to the corner. Punches my face, so he's probably gonna break my artifact. No? I guess he's just dead. So there you go. He's dead on five mana. That's that's about what this deck does. That's going to do it for this one. I think I played like five games, and I'm pretty sure this video is shorter than the one I put out yesterday. Um, I can go into the deck builder. I'll post uh, an imager of the deck. Um, but you can see it here, too. And look at that. The nice curve that Helgen added. I didn't even know. You can see there's 15 one-drops, 12 two-drops, and only six of each three and four drops. I have more one drops than I do three and four combined. So it goes fast. It's a fast deck. And you gotta play fast. Fast and fearless. Um, but yeah. Thanks for watching. I'm just gonna call this episode two. Maybe I'll come back tomorrow. Put out another one. We'll see. And keep climbing the ladder. Keep playing fun decks. I wanna see some new people up here. We got a couple ones lately. Uh, a couple new people on the ladder, not the same old, same old anymore, so love to see that. And yeah, see you guys. And thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends.
Let's make duels great again. Bye-bye.